Chapter 1, The Corporation. In this chapter, we're going to discuss some fundamental aspects of corporate finance. Essentially, we're going to try to develop the strategy or the content uh, for the rest of the course. Corporate finance really addresses two primary questions. There are other questions, but these are the questions we're going to address in this particular course. Um, we want to try to figure out what long-term investments companies should choose. So we need to develop a model that establishes something referred to as value. What is something worth? Of course, this concept is different depending on the person. Every person has a different view of what an asset might be worth to them. But for businesses and, and individuals to make purchases, they must establish this concept of value. The second thing we'll address in this course, that is, how should firms raise money for those selected investments? So we're going to look at some of the factors in determining exactly where companies go to gather funds to invest. So again, we're going to look at several basic topics. How do you determine the value of an asset? How do managers choose investments? How do managers gain access to funds? And we're also incorporated in that whole concept is the idea of performance. How do you measure the metrics or how do you use metrics to assess a firm's value or performance so that it can choose assets accordingly so that they can provide a, 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 a picture of the company that investors are favorable with so that in the end they will give them some uh, assets, some value um, so that they can uh, buy or invest in funds or, or give them funds. What are the major issues with respect to this? We need to talk about the risk return trade-off. Are all risks the same? How do we assess the value of money in different time periods? The time value of money is a very important tool uh, for us to utilize when we're thinking about value. What's more important, profit or cash? How do taxes affect these decisions? What are competitive markets? How do, what do owners really want from a corporation? And with respect to this, the, the question really is, what is the true financial goal of management? What are they supposed to do for the owners of a corporation? How are prices determined? Right? We have a concept called efficient markets. These efficient markets provide guidance on how prices are affected by the information provided by companies. How do managers think and make decisions? Are there conflicts between managers and owners? What is this concept called cash flow? Why is it so important? Are ethics important? Do they, do they have anything to do with making financial decisions? And in the end, how do we measure success? What are those tools? What are the measurements, the metrics that we can use that will allow us to assess the performance of individual managers, the performance of corporations, the performance of portfolios of investments. So those are the basic questions we may want to ask about the company, if you will. <clears throat> so what kind of companies are there? This is just a very short little uh, uh, snippet, but we can see that most of the companies are sole proprietorships, partnerships, limited companies. Only 18% of all the companies in the United States here are, only 18% are corporations. However, that 18% provides 83% of the revenue. If you're providing 83% of the revenue, that must mean you're also providing, in the ballpark, 83% of the taxes to the government, 83% of the, 
of the uh, earnings that go to uh, investors. So corporations provide a vast pool, if you will, of information, of cash, of value and earnings to the United States and obviously to other investors in the world. There are several different kinds of companies, and we'll go through these fairly quickly. A sole proprietorship is the smallest kind of business, right? It's owned and run by one person. If they have any employees, there are usually very few employees. In fact, most of the employees might even be family members. The advantage is, is it's very easy to start a sole proprietorship. It doesn't take much effort. The disadvantage is, really, there's no separation between the firm and owner. We, we have what is referred to as unlimited personal liability. So the question here is, if you are sued and you lose, where do you have to go to get the money to pay for the assets or pay for the penalty on the, on the lawsuit. So the question then boils down to, what are business assets? And this depends on the type of business. A sole proprietor's personal assets and business assets are viewed as one. So the winner of the lawsuit gets to decide what assets they want. Successful small business owners do not want to place their personal assets at risk. So they may choose another type of business, type of firm. So in the end, one of the primary uh, choices, if you will, or one of the primary characteristics that business owners and entrepreneurs look for is a company that is going to uh, shelter their personal assets. So a very risky type of business would never form as a sole proprietorship. They want to be something else. So what else could they be? And again, there aren't many choices. You could be, you could be a partnership, more than one owner. In this case, though, we also have uh, the same type of personal liability. So if you want to shelter assets, this really isn't the type of business that you might want to form. Maybe a limited partnership. So there's two types of these. General partners is what we just talked about. Essentially, they have uh, several owners, <clears throat> and they typically run the business as a group on a day-to-day -day basis. Limited partners have some limited liability, right? These types of partners have no management authority. They can't legally be involved in the managerial decision-making of the business. We would refer to these limited partners as silent partners, right? All they provide is cash. So if all you provide is cash, you're a limited partner, you have limited liability, that means that the only thing you can lose is the investment in the business. A new type of business has been created is something called an LLC. Again, this is essentially a hybrid between a sole proprietorship, a partnership, and the concept of limiting risk. Here, all the owners are going to have limited liability, but all these owners can actually run the business. So now we've got away from a silent partner, and we've gotten to a situation where everybody can run the business. And again, this is a relatively new type of business. In this book, we're going to con concentrate on something referred to as a corporation. Everybody's heard of these, right? The legal separate, uh, it's a legal entity that's separate from its owners. It has many legal powers, just like an owner does. Essentially, the only thing they cannot do is they cannot vote. So a corporation is solely responsible for its own obligations. So owners are not obligated for the debts of a corporation should that corporation uh, go into bankruptcy. Corporations have to be legally formed. They create something called a charter. And this charter then enables them to um, uh, uh, 
do business in a certain way. The charter essentially sets up the rules of how corporations can act. The ownership of a corporation, obviously, we've, you know this, is represented by shares of stock. The sum of all this value is called equity. And there's no limit to how many shareholders you can have. The owner of the company is essentially entitled to the dividend payments. They're entitled to the profits. But we can't say how they'll receive them. And this is one of the questions we'll try to address towards the end of this course. Once a company has profits, what does it do with that profit? It can use it as a source of funding. It can retain it and use that to buy and expand the company. Or it can distribute that uh, to shareholders. And if you put that in the extreme, you could retain 100% or you could pay 100% to shareholders, somewhere in between those two extremes is what corporations want to do. They want to have money to invest, but they also want to give something to their owners so that they can appreciate the, re the, uh, the uh, assets that they have uh, purchased in the form of stocks. The financial manager, again, we referred to this earlier, is really responsible for three types of in decisions. Investment decisions, financing decisions, and cash management. The one aspect that we really won't have a lot of time to talk about in this class is the cash management aspect. We will talk about how you measure this, but we won't talk about the actual process. 